Hi everyone, welcome back. It's Wendy Ackett's, and I'm going to be talking about what we teach in our leadership class here at Ackett's Pies. Last week, we talked a little bit about the genius with a thousand helpers syndrome or form of leadership. And this week, I want to help you identify this a little bit more. And I want you to decide uh, if you have this going on in your place of work or is this your mode of leadership at home or wherever? Um, because it's really a problem when you talk about uh, sustainability in your business moving forward. Uh, there's just a lack of succession planning. So the genius um, makes all the decisions. They call all the shots. All of the helpers here are just doing the work and you know getting bossed around. <laughs> and so, but the genius is um, making all the decisions. The genius here has not allowed any of the helpers to be involved in the decision-making process. So they just have a real lack of mentorship. They have a lack of training. Uh, the big shot here at the top can never really go on vacation. They're, if they do, if they try to step out of the company for a few days, they, the phone is blowing up, you know, everyone's calling because they don't know what to do. They are not autonomous. The real problem is people come to work and they want to feel part of something bigger than themselves. They don't want to come to work <clears throat> and just keep their head down and their nose to the grindstone. They really do want to be asked, what are your ideas for improvement? And this is what I have found over my 25 years here at Ackett's Pie Company. They want to know that their efforts have made an improvement in the company. They want to be able to see those improvements. They want to know you know, what they're doing as an individual contributor, or they want to know that their department is contributing to the business in a positive way. So ultimately, when this genius at the head of the helm leaves the company for whatever reason, the company ultimately suffers. Everyone is lost. No one knows how to make a decision. No one knows how to answer any of the questions that arise. The genius goes around all day long stomping out fires and feels really good about herself or himself. So why is the genius having such a hard time training or mentoring anyone else to rise up through the leadership pipeline? In our class we talk a little bit about the psychology behind this and I'm certainly uh, not a psychotherapist, but I've been in the workforce for 35 years. And I know that there are only two human emotions. And one of them is love. And can you guess what the other main human emotion is that's opposite of love? And most people here in class will say it's hate. And it's really not hate, it's fear. So fear breeds hate. So when you have someone here who thinks they're a genius, they have all the answers, they, they are, they are very good. They're an expert at what they're doing. They really fear not being the center of attention. They fear not you know, getting all the credit for you know, when things go smooth. Really this guy too points to other people and blames other people when things go wrong. They usually don't take the blame, they usually point to others when things go wrong. They have a lot of worry that, you know, if they train somebody else to move up the pipeline, they'll, you know, lose their credibility. They'll, they, they won't be the star, the center of attraction. One of our core values here at Ackett's Pie Company is servant leadership. When you introduce servant leadership into a company that's already launched, it's already been going down, the ship has sailed. I was in business for 18 years before I actually wrote down my core values. Big mistake. So when I wrote down those core values and presented them to my upper leadership, and I said servant leadership is something that we need to you know, embrace here at Ackett's Pie Company. And a lot of people had never heard the phrase servant leadership. And they said servant, servant leadership. I, I don't know if I like that word servant. I don't serve other people. The employees here 
are here to serve me and serve the customers. And so they didn't really understand servant leadership. So here's a little model that I use when I'm training and teaching the teachers, training the trainers on how to be a servant leader. And it's all about, you know, allowing other people to grow up the pipeline through the leadership pipeline. It's imparting your knowledge to others. And everyone has been that new hire. They've been that newbie. First, you know, first day on the job, you have some anxiety, you're, you're nervous, you don't know what this place is, you don't know what the culture is gonna be, you don't know if you're gonna be welcomed. Um, you know, at one point, we were just throwing the magic apron onto people and saying, all right, just follow me, do what I'm doing, and I'm just gonna bark orders at you all day long. Not a very good place to learn and to grow. Kind of hostile, right? So here you are, you're the newbie, You're the newbie on the job, and your leader, your trainer, your team leader, your manager has all the knowledge, really. So they're the genius, basically. They have all of the group knowledge, and they're needing to get that all into you. And so this is the way of how do I get everything that I know into this person? And who knows, it might take a month to learn this particular task or trade or skill. It might take six months. It might take a year. It, who knows? If you're under, you know, learning how to do brain surgery, how long will that take for me to impart everything into this new intern, right? So as time goes up, this line indicates time. It's going to take time for this new hire to learn everything. But after they've been here for maybe a few weeks, a few months, they're learning a little more. And you should be shrinking down a little more. So now you've imparted, maybe you've got now, you're still at 75, maybe they've got about 25% of what they need to learn absorbed. So as time goes on, I'm going to continue to impart more knowledge. And now here you are, under my wing, I've got you at about 75% of the way trained to whatever you need to learn. And I'm over here basically still there by your side. Um, say this is my assistant manager. My assistant manager can do 75% of everything that I can do. Um, he or she is pretty well trained, um, doing pretty well. I could probably leave for a two-week vacation and know that you know my assistant manager will be okay here. It's really great when you continue to go and they're at this stage where they really know 100% and now here you are just standing by. You have now turned over everything to this uh, person that you've been training. This has taken time, like I said, I don't know if it's one month or two years or however long, but it's really great when you are at this stage and this person knows everything you do. The definition of servant leadership is are those that are under your leadership becoming healthier, wiser, freer, more autonomous, and more likely themselves to serve others? Hopefully you can say yes. Hopefully this person here that you have put all of your time into training and mentoring and allowing them time to practice uh, they've had time to make mistakes and now they're here they are fully autonomous you can actually walk away <laughs> take a vacation not have your phone blow up this person knows everything that you knew down here when you first started out that's a really great position to be in there's who knows people need to leave the organization for many reasons right and when you leave the organization hopefully you have not only one but many people trained and moved up through the company. What about these guys over here working under this person whose ego is fear-based? These guys here, man, they don't want to step out and make a decision on their own with this kind of leader. You know, this is fear-based leadership. This is, I better not say anything, I better not try anything, I better not make a mistake, I better just do what I am told. 
And man, this is not a good place to work in the long run. So when I talked about the definition of servant leadership, are those that you are serving becoming healthier, wiser, freer, more autonomous, and more likely themselves to serve others? That's big right there. Because after you have you know, brain dumped everything into this person here, they need to then start the whole learning cycle again because that is really the fourth level of learning is teaching. That's when it really becomes ingrained into you is when you now have to teach. So this person here needs to come right down here and be this person, bringing new people in, continuing to fill the pipeline, you know, and the cycle continues. But if this guy here comes over and now turns into this guy, aha, I've got all the knowledge, you know, the owner of the company has imparted everything to me and I'm just going to keep under everything under my hat, I'm gonna hide, everything is for me and you're not gonna be coming down here. Again, there you go, there's the contrast. This is true servant leadership. If you've taken time to invest everything you know to this person and then they become this, man, you have just wasted a lot of your time and your life and that's a real bummer. The genius is running their business or their department under fear, fear-based leadership um, which is also scarcity mindset. This person feels that if they bring any of these people up uh, and teach them and impart to them some of their knowledge, uh, that person might even get better than they are at that task or that job, and they might lose their job. You know, somebody else might outshine them. And I have actually had employees that have said that exact Thing to me is if I train somebody and teach them everything that I know they're gonna be booting me out of my chair and take my job and where will I be so under that fear-based leadership that is a scarcity mindset they think there's not enough here for me uh, I got to take all the work and try to do it all myself because there won't be any left if I share you know if I share with others there won't be any left here for me <sighs> And so, so that's the opposite of the abundant mindset here versus the scarcity mindset here. The abundant, there's always more work, there's more things to do here at Ackett's Pie Company. And you know, when I interview people and I ask them, why did you leave, you know, or why are you wanting to leave, you know, your, your previous job or your current job? And there's, a, you know, an answer that comes up a lot, and it is, there's no room for advancement for me there. So they're working under this kind of person. They do not see any room for advancement. Man, scarcity mindset. So I have read thousands of applications. And there's a question that we ask on our application. And it says, if you were to be hired at Ackett's Handmade Pie Company, what would you expect from the uh, managers, the supervisors, your team leaders, or the owners. 95% of the people in the world answer that question the same. And I just, I had no idea what to even think of this at first, but I kept seeing the same thing. And people were using almost the same word. They were asking for two things, respect and training. So they do not want to come into a workplace where they're not going to get really great training. They don't want to go in there, feel like an idiot, make mistakes, get yelled at for making mistakes because they weren't trained right. So it's, it's such a strange thing. They don't feel respected if they haven't gotten great training. So really, all they need is really great training. And the respect comes along with it. This is not respectful. This is you not being able to see the potential in the ordinary people, you know, and Michael Gerber talks about, you know, great businesses are run by ordinary people doing extraordinary things. And so that's what I had always thought, that Dave and I weren't really anything, you know, we were super spectacular, we're just ordinary people, but we're doing extraordinary things. All right, you guys, in the comments below, let me know if you learned anything here today. Have you ever felt like the newbie who wasn't sure first day on the job? Have you ever felt like this or 
maybe you've figured out that you're actually this guy here. So whatever the reason, whoever you are, let me know what you thought. Let me know if you learned anything. And um, hopefully I've given you some solutions to combat this here with a servant leadership mode of training. But I really appreciate you being here today, and I hope that you've subscribed to my channel. I'll be back next week with more information of what we teach here at Ackett's Pie Company. Hit the notification bell as well, and please feel free to share it with your friends. All right, you guys, we'll see you next week. Thanks. Bye-bye.